I'm Tom Tang, and we're here at TrackSpec Autosports in Fremont, California. TrackSpec Autosports is a performance racing shop. We work with a lot of enthusiasts just like ourselves to build race cars, prep track cars, and work together with the community of people who are interested in driving fast at the track, but doing so safely. After doing a bunch of years of competitive wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, I started to think about what I wanted to do next. And I remember growing up as a kid watching people do the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, folks like Rod Millen who would drive this like 1400 horsepower turbo monster up the mountain sideways in the dirt. And I just always thought that was the coolest thing in the world. It was so dangerous, so fast, but also there's just something really magical about the idea of you know, a guy, his car, and, and trying to go from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain as quickly as possible. For the 102nd running of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, I'm going to be driving a 2002 BMW E46 M3. Uh, this is a car that I've campaigned for a couple years now. It was previously an endurance race car, so the same car that I built and ran the 25 Hours of Thunder Hill with. Last winter, we basically took it back down to a bare chassis and rebuilt the car back up with the idea that it would be set up to tackle uh, the mountain. You can bring any car that's fast to Pikes Peak, but you have a lot of challenges that are thrown your way. Obviously, there are things like unpredictable weather conditions, road surface conditions, etc. With the altitude, because the summit of the mountain is 14,115 feet, and your starting line is at just over 9,000 feet, that means with the elevation, the air is very thin. And most people think, okay, that means you know, I'm gonna lose horsepower because of the altitude. But what they may not be thinking about is also the fact that with the thinner air, temperatures are gonna rise exponentially. So we did a lot of really thoughtful engineering in preparing for that. So our solution for solving the cooling issue was really twofold. Uh, one, we wanted to make sure that we could keep the air temps as cool as possible so that we could maximize the horsepower you know, that the engine could produce. So we decided to cut off the front half of the car basically and build our own custom tube frame front end where then we were able to uh, V-mount uh, the front mount intercooler. While V-mounting, we also decided to V-mount the radiator. And the advantage of doing that is that not only are we able to cool the air more efficiently or effectively, but also the air would then exit through the hood, creating additional downforce. The S54 engine, which comes in the E46 M3, is normally running a mechanical water pump that operated with a thermostat. So we took a BMW M235R factory electric water pump and adapted it to our S54 engine in my car. In order to handle the three different courses that exist at Pikes Peak, we had to think a lot about the setup of the car. Uh, obviously, we wanted to generate as much downforce as possible, which is why we really added a lot of um, aerodynamic bits to the car. So the car has a wide uh, carbon fiber uh, body, a huge front splitter, we have a new chassis mounted wing, and we have essentially a flat bottom with a diffuser out the back. So aero grip is important. And then of course, mechanical grip, right? Because as I talked about earlier, when we get to the middle section of the mountain, you have to be able to really put the power down in some of those tight air pits, right? So how do we do that with a challenging road surface? Obviously, we've got a great tire partner, right? Working with Toyo. But the main thing for me is thinking about the suspension setup on the car. For Pikes Peak, because we have essentially three different parts of the track, normally when you set up the suspension of the car, you have to choose, are we optimizing for the lower section, the mid section, or the high section? Or do we sort of take an average and set the car up for like an average across the three? we realize with the technology available to us today that we don't have to choose or we don't have to compromise. So we're partnering with JRZ Suspension and running a really cool active damper system. So basically the computer can control and actively adjust the damping rate of the car while I'm driving up the mountain. It's a really neat system. It basically has a computer on board with uh, built-in gyroscopes and accelerometers, and we can set compression and rebound we want. And then we can also even set how much do we want the car to 
pitch or roll or to dive or squat under braking or acceleration. At the end of the day, we also need to make sure that the springs that we run on the car are high quality, consistent, and springs that we can count on, which is why we partner with Eibach. We're super excited to be running the ERS series. Those are the racing series line of Eibach springs. Because we want to ensure that the car has as much shock travel as possible, we sized and length the dampers on the car accordingly. That means we also need to have the right length of springs. And on my car, we run not only Eibach main springs, but we also run Eibach helper springs. That ensures that everything is able to settle accordingly in terms of how the, the shock is built on each of the corners. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this informative or at least interesting. If you wanna see more cool content about what we're up to this year for the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And also, if you wanna give me a follow on Instagram, I'm at Tom Chu Tang. Thanks so much.